Welcome to the Great American Collectible Show, seen Wednesdays on the Sports Collectors Daily Facebook page and the Great American Collectibles Facebook page. You can also listen to us on iHeartRadio, Pandora, and Spotify. The Great American Collectibles Show is brought to you by the National Sports Collectors Convention and Sports Collectors Daily. Tonight's headlines are brought to you by Sports Collectors Daily. For all your hobby news, features, and more, go to sportscollectorsdaily.com. And now your host, Tom Zappala and Red Sox Hall of Famer, Rico Petroselli. Well, well, well. What's going on, brother? No, not much. Hey, everybody out there. Do I look good? You look, yeah. You, you, let's just say you look. <laughs> you all right? I'm listing. <laughs> no, no, he's, you know, he still has the bad back. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah. Go. Be fine. No, no. The, look, look, I went over to surgery with the doctor. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, what is it? Is he he's, cutting you? He's, he's cutting you? He's Ooh. using a, uh, a skill saw. <laughs> I believe it. No, it's no, not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not uh, yeah, he's hurting, folks. No, so. it's, it's going to be fine. It'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, welcome to the Great American Collectible Show. Tom Thank Zappler, you. Red Sox Hall of Famer, Rico Petroselli. Ready to go. We have a cool show today. We do? We've got our good friend, Charlie Perino from J.R.I. Cards, is going to be with us for the entire All right, hour. right, man. Well, almost the entire hour. That's nice. We love Charlie. Yes, we do. And great guy. we have, we're going to bring him in right now, Mike Russick. From we, Gray Flannel Auctions. Wait a minute. We love Mike, too. Don't I we? love, Yeah, I love Gray Flannel. Love you, Mike. And a little later on, by the way, Danny Wilkin from Memory Lane is going to talk about a, an exhibit that Memory Lane is doing at Yankee Stadium. And we love him, And too. we love Danny. But let's say hi to Michael. Mike, how are you? I'm good, guys. Thanks for having me again. Mike, I got to tell you, man, I told you this. Uh, I said this to you off, uh, off camera. This auction of yours is the best memorabilia auction I have ever seen. I'm not kidding. Uh, and I've seen a lot of them with, you know, Memory Lane and Heritage. I'm talking strictly memorabilia. How did you get this stuff? Yeah, considering that, you know, we don't do that much in the card space and we're really game used in autographs, it's a tremendous lineup, wow. you know. I mean, one thing <laughs> after another, let's talk about the game used Wilt jersey. Will Chamberlain. Chamberlain jersey is lot number one in the sale. Uh, tremendous item. You know, it's from his first year with the Lakers. And if you guys know anything about the game new space and the way the photo matching has taken off and yeah. added so much value, we were able to match this one to a 60 point performance. And he played against Oscar Robertson. It's pretty sick. Wow. It must be gigantic, yeah. huh? This, I mean, yeah, it's a big, it's seven, a big, big piece. Seven. Wilt was a big boy himself. Yeah, Ooh. but it's a big item. Yeah. You know? uh, Mike, when you. Are your photo matching? I know there's a lot of different people that do photo matching. So do you do you work with one company in particular, or do you guys do it and send it off to? How do you guys do? Well, it? our skill set here is that we handle the game use authentication in house for the most part. So we run all the initial processes through our internal authentication, and then if we want to do a secondary level through PSA or one of the competitors, so it's you know out there for whoever enjoys that side of the market share, we'll go and do it. But we do most of it in-house. Yeah. No, you said something before that you you just handled, what were the two things you mentioned that you handled uh, mostly, not cards? Yeah, yeah we do game use, used memorabilia. Game used, yeah. what, what and then you, Hall of Fame autographs. Well, what made you go into that niche, let's say? Good question. Yeah, I mean, this is a 30-year family business. You know, my father started it back in 89, yeah. Um, at that point, it was all baseball cards and really no game used. And he was one of the pioneers that started the game used market by sourcing these jerseys and really creating the marketplace for it. Uh, it's what I really have a passion for. You know, uh, I, mean, cards, I understand them, but once they're in that plastic, you can't touch them. Uh, you know, Jersey something I couldn't agree are, with you more. Are, I mean, we yeah, talk about yeah. this a lot, Mike. There's a big, I, I have gotten rid of all of my cards. Except I have about eight that I'm using to 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 sell, you know, and I've got into memorabilia. I, I memorabilia to me now, it's like I, I always say the the player's DNA is somewhere on that item, and I, there's nothing like having a game used jersey or a game used hat or a game used glove or a pair of basketball shorts That's... that belonged to. Oh. Yeah. A certain individual, absolutely. It's, you know, I mean, cards it's, are great. They're great. I it's more than that, right? Go ahead. It's 
it's a moment in time is what it is. You know, when this athlete actually wore this garment, uh, ties it back to your memories more to me than baseball cards. I couldn't agree with you more. You know, I just picked up, I don't, I didn't tell you this last week I picked up at an auction. It was a small auction locally. And I was shocked that nobody bit. Well, it was one other bidder. I wound up buying a game, uh, a ticket stub, uh, not a stub, a whole ticket. Yeah. Dated April 19th, 1912, the very first game wow. at Fenway Park. See, that's great. I, just, I said, I mean, this is the stuff that I, you know. They took me, uh, went to the Hall of Fame, me and Jim Lomberg, and they took us downstairs. Uh, the president at that time was from Boston. Anyway, and he showed us the old glove. One of the old gloves was about this big. It was a, and a, a Ty Cobb bat. A game used Just to bat. hold it. Right? Just, I said, this is history. Right. This is you get, you get to hold it. You feel the weight. Oh, man, you know. it's great how it was. Now, I do have a question for you, Mike, and I was shocked when I saw this. I told Rico, you have Kyle Yastrzemski's 1967 championship ring. We do. That was cons- consigned by his grandson, correct? Uh, originally sold to our consigner by his grandson. Gotcha. Now, do so you this still has been out of the marketplace for, you know, 15 or so years. First time offered publicly. It, do you still have yours? Yes, I do. Yeah. That's it. So, no, you have uh, a 75, too. No, I got, yeah, I got a 67, 75. I got uh, all-star rings from Mr. Yorkey from the Red Sox. So, Mike, what is that, uh, what is the bidding starting on that ring? Do you know? I can't We're remember. opening the bidding at $5,000. Yeah, that's, I think that's a good price oh, to yeah. start that off. Bidding for the sale opened yesterday. Uh, you know, we had great first early action, and right now it's at 6000 Why don't we oh, yeah, pitch in, win one. it, that's and a- give it a call? Yeah. <laughs> get one of his bats. Exactly. Um, also, you have a, a mantle gamer, a game used mantle bat. Can you we tell do. us a little about the history of that item? Yeah, super unique bat uh, dated to the 1964 season. And, you know, if you're looking back at Mantle's records, it was really his last big productive year. Uh, you know, some of the cool attributes of this bat, it's got his proper pine tar markings on there. A beautiful faded number seven on the knob. And this one's actually signed by Mantle and Maris. Wow. wow that's it's cool. the only that's known nice. gamer signed by those two iconic players. Very cool. Yeah. Oh, Very cool. Yeah. Oh, man. Anything Mantle is I know. fabulous. But uh, what about Munson? You got a Munson uh, game used also? We do. We got a Munson mitt from his uh, MVP season, which is very cool. Yeah, nice. You know, and it actually once belonged in the collection of Reggie Jackson. So there's some Yankee ties there and adding to the lineage. Yeah, Very cool. Mike, nice. you, I mean, you have such an array. Uh, you know, we can't, obviously we can't go through everything. You, you also have a 1916 Red Sox ring that I saw that's really cool. Uh, uh, pocket watch. Yeah. It's I mean, a pocket, yeah, watch. pocket watch. Yeah. And then you have a Jerry West jacket, a game, a, a game user. But it was a warm-up jacket, correct? Beautiful satin warm-up. West on the back. You know, that iconic yellow and purple Lakers colors. To me, it's one of the most displayable, beautiful, actually, pieces of artwork. If you could look at these garments as artwork in the auction. Michael, before – go ahead. Continue. No, I'm sorry. No, it's a killer. I I mean, we have about a minute and a half. Um, Any other items that really stick out that people would be interested in? I mean, did – Everything is like crazy. Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, on the modern side, we've got Brady's last game used pants, which is really interesting. Um, and probably my favorite lot in the entire auction is Jim Abbott's jersey that he was wearing for his iconic no hitter in Yankee Stadium. Wow. Jeez. Yeah. Very and the Yankees really actually let it go in a tent sale. Um, you know, the original buyer purchased it for just a few hundred dollars. And then through that photo matching process that we were talking about, we were able to pinpoint it and put it on his back from that no hitter. Very cool. It's one of the best feel good stories there ever was in baseball. So yeah. before we let you go, Michael, um, your consignments, I mean, they must come from all over. Like, is there, is there are there just a few consignments that have some some great stuff that consigned to you, or does it come from everywhere? Well, it's a combination of both. You know, we try to source the fresh to market stuff that no one's ever heard of or seen of that they thought was lost over time. And a lot of that is one off consigners. They might have it in their attic. They didn't realize. But then we also have clients that we're building major collections for that keep on calling it down or moving it around. 
you know, sometimes they're downgrading, sometimes they're upgrading. Yeah. Awesome. Your website yeah. address? It's grayflannelauctions.com. Grayflannelauctions.com. To our viewers and listeners, and I'm not kidding, uh, I've, I've seen, obviously, we've all seen a lot of uh, memorabilia auctions. This one here, man, is at the top of the list that I've seen. Game used, yeah. I it's, mean, it's, it's just one thing after another. Yeah. Uh, it's well, really it's a great. wonderful... And, of course, every time he comes on, he costs me money. Well, you're going you know, to be, yeah. That. There's a couple of items I'm taking a look at. All right, Mike, we appreciate well, we're, it. We appreciate it. We're real proud of the sale. Bidding ends June 9th. Uh, and I hope you guys have a great week. Great. Hey, Take great. care. You too. Take care. Mike Russick yeah, from Mike. Great Flannel Auctions. Oh, I'll tell man. you, man, Ooh, uh, you, you, you got to go online and see what he's yeah, got. It's I, just I killer stuff. Killer stuff. All right. Our... Uh, Co-host today is Co-host. a man that we all love. Yes. The man with the many hats. Our good friend, Charlie Perino from JRI Cars. How are you, Charles? Charlie. So you were the one that outbid me on that Fenway Park ticket, didn't you? It was you. <laughs> that was me. Can I tell you something? There were two in that auction. And I bid on the first one. I was going back and forth, and I was an idiot because I was going back and forth with a guy. Yeah. I don't know where he was from. And I, I outbid him. Then the second one came up. We went back and forth, and I said, "You know something? That was Rico. I'll let him. Ha- I'll let him have <laughs> yeah. it." So anyway, that's right. By the way, that's a great name too, Gray Flannel. I, 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 that's a great story. His father was the founder. That's a good name for an auction. And I'll tell you, man, it's you know, a great flannel. They work. Gray flannel, flannel was also a cologne. And, yeah, and it had a. Uh, I remember that. Uh, yeah, remember that's a, a clothing line. Gray flannel, Gray flannel. cologne was in the same category, because you could buy it for three bucks. Mm-hmm. Same category as Jade East. Jade East, right? English leather. Yeah, I use that. And Aramis. Right. Right, so and Brute Fabergé. And Brute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brute. That's, yeah, yeah. You get a gallon for like $2. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Charlie, tell us about your, your Gretzky spectacle break. Yeah, yeah, I know actually I was going to bring the pack up and show you guys it's in the safe, but we have a Gretzky Spectacle pack. Boy, I tell you, 1,979 spots to get into this. Uh, 1,979 wow. spots. 1979. I know. No, 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 I got it. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I was always Gretzky, good at that. It's the O'Peach uh, pack, and Gretzky's on the back. Uh, it's, so it's not a question, will we find them? He's in there. And when all the spots sell out, we're going to open it and have all those cards graded and invite all 1,979 people back. Someone's going to get that card, which we can't say if it's in there because it's there. We saw it. If it's a perfect 10, anywhere from a million to $2 million for that card. So that's unbelievable. So um, how much is a buy-in? It's $50, $50. And uh, that gets you a buy-in for one spot, but we also give, we have a blender item. Uh, Right now, I believe we have a 1988 Topps football wax box that's sealed. So if you spend $50, you get a shot at that Gretzky. But in the meantime, we'll open up that blender item, which is a 1988 football wax box uh, looking for Bo Jackson. So in the meantime, while you wait for your state to come, that's like a little piece of bread so, or something. All right. So wait a second. How many spots have you sold? Uh, we have six hundred and one left. So, <laughs> so, so if you can, buy, somebody can somebody buy three or four. Yeah, that's what I was just saying. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. People can do five, that, right? Six, well, see, if, if someone were okay, let's do some quick math. How Uh-oh. much is nineteen hundred times fifty? Times fifty. That's uh, twenty six thousand four hundred forty two. No, it is not. Hold on, real quick. <laughs> do I know nineteen hundred? Yeah. Times fifty bucks is ninety three thousand bucks, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you could, if you had the dough, that's why a not great deal. Why not invest me? the ninety three thousand, buy all the spots? No, no, and, no, no. It's, uh, well, hold on. What's a what's a PSA nine worth, Charlie? About one hundred and twenty five thousand. Eh, you're still up. No, I'm not saying that's not fair. Other people want to get it. Oh well, yeah. That's see what he did. does, I, Charlie. If you had, if you were starting fair. this. If you were just starting this today and I bought all 1,900 spots, what would you say? 
Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> you no, you can't, you can't do that. But what Rico's saying is, too, yeah, you, you want a lot of people in there. You, of want, course. you want that chance. You turn so. those other people off. They Get out of here. Back. I would have bought them all. Go ahead. Good. Let, Charlie, let them buy them I all. don't have the dough. Yes, you do. I you. don't have the dough. Well, what kind you of card are you just You have a couple buy? of people that reached out that said when it gets to, like, a couple of hundred, yeah. then, they, then they come in and buy them all just to cut to the chase and let us open it. Yeah. But the blender item, too, we pulled some... Several hundred dollars worth of cards. We pulled a 20, uh, an Otani, I believe it was an Otani uh, box loader out of one of our Allen and Ginter boxes. That blender item may contain a card worth 500 to to $1,000. Uh, wow. You get the Bo Jackson card, it's probably worth at least $50. See, this is the you, stuff, you, stuff you I like to talk yeah, to Charlie Yeah, this about. is great. This is the stuff that we like. Charlie and it's Carino affordable. from JRI Cards. Is here with us. Yes, he is. But right now, guess what time it is, Reek? Uh, it's it is time it's, for it's night. Time. Our segment it's on eight. deck with Rico. We go on at six. And now on deck with Rico Parasoli. Rico Parasoli. <laughs> Hi, my name is Willie. Time for on deck with Miko Petroselli. She says Miko. Miko, yeah. Miko Petroselli. All right, time for our segment on deck with Rico, brought to us by our good friend. Brian Dwyer and the great staff at REA Auctions. Don't forget to get your bid in by going to robertedwardauctions.com. That's Robert Edward Auctions for extraordinary results and extraordinary service. Absolutely. Are you ready? Yes, ma'am. Submitted by Ron Valenti. Hey, Ron. Ronnie Ron Valenti. Valenti. It sounds familiar. It's actually just a two part question. No, second baseman. What? What? That was, was no Ron Valenti that was a second baseman. What are you talking about? Well, it sounds like him anyway. No, but was, go ahead. What was the feeling like getting called up to the big leagues for the first time when you were in AAA, and who gave you the word? Take us back to that moment. I was in AA. Oh, you were? Yeah. And, Seattle? Uh, no. Uh, it was uh, Pennsylvania. Okay. And uh, Eddie Papowski was the manager, and... <clears throat> Towards the end of the season, we, I don't know, we were in the middle of the pack. And he called me into the office and said, Red Sox, hey, Rico. <laughs> Ricky called me. Ricky, I want to, you're going to be called up to the big leagues for the month of September. <laughs> September. <laughs> and I peed in my pants. <laughs> yeah, I would have. Sorry. <laughs> and then uh, I says, Wow. So I, I joined him on the road. Oh, I'm talking. Wait, like wait, him. wait. So you no, yeah. hold on. Yeah. So you 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 walked out of the office. Yeah. I, I was like, oh, I was, uh, I was like, wow, getting to the big leagues. But that's good and bad for me. Why? Because after after that time, after that month in the big leagues, I don't want to go back down to the minors. <laughs> oh. Oh, but now as a manager, when I manage Pawtucket, I. Told guys, and Charlie, jump in here. By the yeah, way, yeah, I told Tell guys, hey, you're going up. Uh, John Valentin, well, he didn't, but uh, Mo, Mo Vaughn came in, and a couple of other guys. You're going up to the big leagues, you know. But sometimes I used to break their chops, you know. It's just teasing. <laughs> hey, you're going back down to the minors, you're going down to double A. Oh, hey, <laughs> I, they want to punch me. Who was the first person you called? Uh, called up. No, when, when when you get called, oh up. my, of course my my parents and then my brother, I'm going up. So I had a, I met them on the road, and we had a ten day road trip, and then we came back to Fenway, and uh, finished out the season. I got in one game. I was you did one game. I got a, a first hit, a double. Uh, uh, so so uh, it was it's for a young kid especially. It's a, you know, who is that against? Three. Twins. So they didn't throw you in at the end to, to play a little shot stop? Yeah, one game. That was it. That's it. Johnny Pesky was the manager. And, uh, you know, uh, I was 18 years old, for Pete's sakes. But, I got uh, the, but then you went down, you, you had the uh, winter. Yeah, I, went to the big league camp the next year, went to triple-A ball, and then the next year I made the team, and the rest is history. Did Good you ever story. go back down after you were called up? Or you, you were yeah, up? you did. Well, that, yeah. for the month, you know, I know I was going to stay, you know, but... Uh, the next year, we went to AAA in Seattle and then uh, then made the big league. So the year after that is when, during spring training, you made the bigs. After AAA? Or did after they- AAA. Yeah. Yeah, after AAA. So, so but I mean, it's it's for a, a young guy, any anybody, you, you know, they'll say, you, are you kidding? Are you serious? I said, yeah, go ahead, get up there and do the job. 
And the kid, you know, was so excited. You get the big league. Awesome, awesome. I mean, geez. All right, Charlie, yeah, we got to take a break in a few minutes, but I do have another question here. Go ahead. Um, have you, you know, I know you do a lot of pack pack openings. Have you ever done a pack opening on like a 50s tops set? You know, a, a, a 52 set? Like, have you ever done a rip on any of those things? Like really iconic, iconic packs. Oh, well, well, let me go back one step. On that spectacle break, you were doing the math before. I forgot to mention right now it's a buy two, get one free. Oh, so really? Huh? Someone wanted the last 600. They only paid for 400. Uh, we're trying to speed it up a little bit because we want to open it during the national during that whole weekend. Oh yeah, uh, but yeah. we'll see. But it is a buy two get one free, so if you can get that abacus yeah. out, figure out the odds there. It's <laughs> pop, you probably got a little bit better. <laughs> uh, back to the fifties. We only open up packs. We give away a lot of cards during the show. On Monday, you spend two hundred and fifty dollars, you get a free slab, and. In there, it could be a 54 card, a 53. Okay, okay. Cool card. Obviously, it's not mantle, you yeah. know, but they're cool cards for people to actually hold and, and get for their collection. Absolutely. But we do spot breaks. The spectacle, if it's that big, we got to brought it out to a lot of people. Oh, it's absolutely. I would good. say. All right, we're going to take a break. When you come back, you can ask your question. I forget. I'll like forget I it. No, oh, no, I wanted to ask him the, 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 oh, that after the break. All right. We're going to take break. a quick break. When we come back, another Gax Blast from the Past. Oh, I can't wait. This is a good I one. Can't wait. I tell you what, I dug for this one. I dug for this one. Hang in there, we'll be right back. Since 1996, Brian Drent and the staff at Denver's Mile High Card Company have led the charge in the collectibles hobby. Mile High is a full service dealer specializing in buying and selling cards and offers a competitive consignment program for all collectors. Whether it be their computerized want list service, appraisals, or auction services, Mile High has it all. If you've been searching for a company with a selection of high-grade vintage 1888 to 1970 baseball cards and memorabilia that shares your passion, aim high, Mile High. Go to milehighcardco.com or call 303-840-2784 for more information. Hi, this is Dan from Memory Lane Auctions here to remind you that the renowned Memory Lane Collectibles Company has served as a beacon of light to the collecting community for the past several decades. Indeed, folks, it has been our utmost privilege and pleasure to provide the most enthusiastic collectors with an abundance of the finest sports cards and memorabilia for America's most coveted sports personalities via our world-class auctions. Whether you choose either a private sale transaction or the auction route, Memory Lane cordially invites you to reach out to us to maximize the value of your prized possessions. Also, it is not just sales that we pride ourselves on being the best of the rest, because if you are seeking a particular keepsake for your esteemed gathering, we will be relentless in our quest to find that special piece to fulfill your collecting dreams. So no time to wait. Reach out to us today for the purposes of capitalizing on our unparalleled marketing capabilities. Simply pick up the phone and dial 877-606-5263. That's 877-606-LANE. Or find us on the World Wide Web at www.memorylaneinc.com. Now is the time for your valued consignment to ultimately become another one of Memory Lane's record-setting prices. This is Brian Drent, president of Mile High Card Company. Is your sports card and memorabilia collection properly insured? For easily replaced personal property, homeowner's insurance is all most people need. But for prized possessions that you may have spent a lifetime collecting, it doesn't go nearly far enough. Collectibles Insurance Services has been insuring for over 50 years. They offer a full range of protection and a zero dollar deductible at an affordable rate with no appraisals required. I know because they insure my collection. If you have a minute, go to collectinsure.com and learn more about insuring your personal card or memorabilia collection. How would you like to own the bat that was used by your favorite player when he hit that towering home run or game-winning base hit? Now look no further than JT Sports, specializing in the sale and authentication of professional game-used bats. As the official authenticators of professional model game used bats for PSA DNA, JT Sports will guarantee the authenticity of any bat purchased from them. JT Sports also buys and sells game-worn uniforms, gloves, and baseball equipment. 
The unique quality of the collectible is what JT Sports is all about. Give them a call at 609-487-8003 or check them out at GameUseBats.com. Okay, we are back. And it is time for a Gax Blast from the Past. Brought to you by our good friend Paul Borges yeah, and great. the folks at PB Collectibles, your neighborhood card shop. Yeah. Go to pbcollectibles.com to find that special card or piece of memorabilia. I dug for this one. All right. This yeah. is a cool piece. Well, I, I know you worked hard. No, hard I found hard. it. I no, went on. I know. Charlie, you're not going to be able to see it. You're going to be able to. Actually, there's, there's no sound to it, so sit tight. You'll see it tomorrow uh, when we air it. But this oh. is the Bambino oh, yeah. and the Iron Man taking a little batting practice. Who's the Iron Man? You're kidding. No. Go ahead. Jeez. Oh, you're Garrett. Correct. What is this? Batting practice. No batting cage. practice. No cage. Oh, this is before the game. It must be. Oh, of course. Pretty, both of them, boy. Pretty yeah, cool, man. Yeah, both of them are great. Pretty players. cool. In color. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, you know, I never saw... I mean, I... You know, you've seen film of them with, in fast motion. Garrett, he's got that hitch though, guy. Rico, huh? Yeah, but the, yeah, uh, a lot of them did that. See, see the it's stride, like a, the stride. They step into it. Yeah, and that's amazing that you can hit a ball. See, you, you, everything's moving. And the other thing I noticed is look how close Babe Ruth's feet are. Yes. No, well, he's the Ruth, strider. Ruth comes Both. back. Oh, d- 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 that was it. Oh, okay. I thought we had a double. But did yeah, you but notice Ruth, his, 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 his feet, feet were yeah, close. They're very close. Because they stride. Uh, this, if you can, they don't teach that now. I mean, the, the bigger the stride, the, your head's moving, everything. And, you know, the only guy that hit off his front foot, uh, well, not the only guy, but Aaron <clears throat> and um, a couple of other guys. But most guys stay, take a little stride, and then hit. You know, home run guys hit off that back foot. So, you, like, uh, who was the guy? Charlie White? No, Charlie White. Uh, Ch- Charlie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Charlie. Uh, Charlie. Uh, no, come on. Charlie Horse. The uh, guy for the uh, the Red Sox that had a different. Yeah, they used to swing they, down. Swing down on the yeah, ball. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember yeah. his name. Yeah, Charlie. No, uh, Charlie was a good teacher. Anyway. Walt Raniak taught that way. Charlie. Joe DiMaggio. Walt Raniak. Walt Raniak. Walt Raniak. Walt Raniak. I'm sorry, Joe Charlie. Joe DiMaggio had a wide stance that no one could figure out how yeah, to he did. Short stride. Very short, he strong. Did. He, he was did. strong as a bull. We are chatting oh, with our good friend. I'm sorry. The Iron Horse. Iron Horse. Uh, I said Iron, the Iron, Iron Man. That yeah, I know. That was a t- you Ellen, Ellen said the Iron Man. I, that, was a, that was a mistake. That's what I, see? And he said to me, what? No, you, you haven't said, heard of the Iron Man? Me. The Iron Man. No, you said Iron Mike. <laughs> no, I, And I said, he's not boxing Babe Ruth, is what I said. <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget, by the way, uh, Danny Wilkin from... Uh, Memory Lane is going to be joining us uh, after this next break because they're doing a little gig. Charlie, <laughs> explain what a shot pack is. Oh, a oh. shot pack. Most of our packs, the graded, unsearched, and sealed in the PSA holders, we sell those by the card. And when it sells out, you get an email, we open it. A shot pack is one pack, one shot. Uh, it could be a Brady rookie year. It could be an Aaron Rodgers rookie year, Jeter, Otani. Kobe Bryant, their rookie years. Yeah. And I'll tell you something about Brady. His 01, 02, third, fourth, fifth year cards are going up in value also because people can't afford the 2000s. They, you buy they, a shot pack, we have about over 100 of them up there. Oh, wow. uh, you go to our list and we break it down by sport, including Pokemon. We throw a couple in there of those. Nice. And you buy the pack and we open it, looking for that one big shot pack fresh card. How how long has the sh- the packs been going on? The ripping? The reason- Huh? I mean, like the opening of the pack? Yeah, the That's opening a good question. of the pack. Is that uh, how far back? Because Who, I, I don't remember. Who's the that. pioneer of that? I mean, some people say Leighton is, Leighton Sheldon. But is, is Leighton, you know who the, how long have they been doing that? I mean, oh, it must have been before. Well, no, when we people go. Doing, people were doing it online. Like if, I, right. if I'm home by myself and I buy a pack and I open it and I put it on YouTube. And that's where I first started seeing people opening packs 
and filming it, but they were there by themselves. Maybe their son was there or their family and they're opening a pack. And that's what I started to do with my kids growing up. We started um, every Christmas, we'd open up packs. Okay. Yeah, uh, we, I, I can see that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's so funny. You're talking, you're talking about the kids. When I was, when my son, I was collecting, my son was about nine, eight or nine, right? And I was collecting T206 cards. So I bought a Honus Wagner reprint, right? Oh, yeah. This is so funny. I bought a reprint and I put it out in my yard. I dug, a, I dug a little <laughs> hole by a tree, <laughs> right? You hid and, it and covered it, right? <laughs> so I said to him, you know, this is an old house. Let's go see if we can find some cards. <laughs> he was about eight. Yeah. So, of course, I told him where to dig and stuff. We'll find something. He, he starts going crazy. Uh, look, look. Uh, I, I, it's great. The kids. Never oh, forget you that. see the kids. Uh, I did a card show signing, but so many kids with their either the parents Oh, grandparents were there, and it was great to see. Charlie, your your customer base, um, like I know Dan and uh, JP, their customer base is more vintage. What is your customer base? Is it is it does it tilt more to the vintage or to modern or a little of both? Great question. It's a little bit of everything. Obviously, maybe a little bit more towards the mid modern. Those are the shot packs. They start at ninety six and they go up to maybe Mahomes' year, maybe Otani. Uh, we don't pull rookies that are playing today. We need a couple of years to get them under a base. We have vintage packs, and that's our true base also. But these things are hard to find. They really are like a fifty eight football cello with Johnny Unitas on top. Yeah. You can't go to Walmart and Target and find these. It, it, it's impossible. So those, yeah. I think that's a great question. I think it's a mix of both. It depends on the customer. The younger people like the modern guys. The older people like uh, the vintage guys. The younger guys like the vintage guys. It's just a, a pure diversification from all the packs. I mean, I'll tell you right now, we're, we haven't listed this yet, but that's an exhibit pack from 1939 to 48. That's a nice an old GI holder, and that's wow. the splendid splinter on top. Yeah, of that's it. pretty cool. Pretty yeah, cool. Nice. And we're, you know, we're, we're getting up a little arsenal for the national. To get right. What about what about that gap between the '60s and the '90s, the '70s and '80s cards? Uh, is there much interest in that? I'm talking about you know, like the Rico, the Rico era, '75, '77, '79, '81, '73 wax pack. Right in, my, right, right in Rico's wheelhouse, uh, 1970 cello, where uh, I think 1970 Willie Mays, Ernie Banks, uh, P. Rose. That's a second. That's a. Uh, I think it's a. What is it? Sixth series card. We pulled Reggie Jackson. Thurman. I pulled Thurman Munson out of one of these two weeks ago. So you would oh, think nice. you would think that with that with that those two decades, the collectors that were young then, you know, now they're yeah. in there. What they're in their forties yeah. and fifties, yeah. right? Or fifties yeah. and sixties, whatever. You know, you would think that that's a a, oh. a real niche for them. That that we bring, back, yeah, we bring yeah. back memories as a kid. They're when probably I was a kid, buying them. People yeah. were on a paper route. People were making. You know, we had piggy banks when we were little, and we used to take yeah, yeah, yeah. ten cents, five two nickels, and go buy a pack. And like Rico sees these, we saw it today at the benefit we did. The little kids are so excited. Oh, yeah. The cardboard. They love it. It's great. Back when we grew up, we were reliving the past. And a lot of our customers, like, I collected that pack as a kid. Yeah. And here's my chance to relive those memories with my son now and show him it's some of the a, great players back in the day. And when you look at them, you know, when I go around and look at the, the cards there and say, oh, geez, I remember that guy. He was a pretty good, you know, hitter, whatever it is. Or my kid, I played against him. Holy jeez. That's what I'm so, saying. So, I mean, it's it, it, it's a great hobby uh, for, for kids and it, we, we go back in time. I love it. I so love it. Like a I want to ask right, Charlie, I want to ask you about your rewards program. Can you tell us we a little a bit? rewards program. Any customer that buys, similar to like the, uh, Starbucks, something along that line, whenever you buy, you get points, and points are accumulated and used at checkout uh, for future purposes. It gets a little perk. Uh, some people are very cost conscious, but the reward points can bring down a spot from $80 down to $40. Some people use them and collect the free spot. And if you're a membership, we double the rewards and give also discounts yeah. on there. That's great. Very, That's very, nice. very cool. Uh, we are chatting with Charlie Perino, our good friend. Nice. Charlie, I got to ask you a question that's been really bugging me. Is it sauce or is it gravy? 
I want back the sauce. Sauce. The, the, yeah, I think it is the sauce. Call it gravy. I don't call it gravy. No, it's 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 sauce, Charlie. Right? Ooh. Everybody needs to understand that it is sauce. Gravy is brown. Gravy goes on roast beef. Are we in agreement there? Oh yeah, I'm sure the fans out there. Uh, well, I'm just watching, I, I'm just really trying to make excited. a point here. I'm trying to make a point. No, you Man, are. I roast beef sub for lunch now. That sounded pretty good. It's brown <laughs> gravy <laughs> or brown sauce. You can make an argument. I'll take the brown sauce. <laughs> See. Uh, uh, yes. uh, Danny Wilkin, yeah, he calls it gravy. Well, okay, I, can, I guarantee it. From Southern Cal, they call it gravy. You know, that's like uh, you with the moderns. He gets, you see, he hates the moderns. I don't hate it. Well, you don't like the moderns. Uh, and then the hell I, said, I, I said, uh, no, you got to have, because it's the future. I'm, Let not, them I'm not opposed you to know? modern collecting. Well, you, I'm opposed to some of the people that are. Uh, Shilling. Well, of course. Modern. Yeah, collecting. yeah. That's what I, I have a I problem. With. You. Charlie, do you, you want to hear something even more modern? Yeah. There have been cards from high school athletes and some of the Leaf products out there. The number one quarterback in the I country in break. high school. He, he doesn't even drive yet. No kidding. And you can put Juju, uh, uh, Juju somebody. I forget. I, Juju but, Smith. No, that's not Juju Smith Schuster. Uh, it's out of the league. Juju beat. But it's amazing. They're doing that to high school kids now? High school. You can be, a se- you can be ready to go to your senior prom and t- uh, Leaf is giving you money to sign your autograph. Yeah. Well, you know, Septon, before we take a break, we're going to take an early break because I want to bring Dan in. You know Danny Welcome from Memory Lane. Yeah, I, I want to bring Dan in so he can kind of hang with us. We're going to be all over the place. But, you know, they were yeah. talking about Caitlin uh, uh, Clark's. The girl, yeah. The money that she made. She signed a seventy-five thousand dollar contract, right? Yes. Then she signed, but she has signed a twenty Millions. million dollar contract Nike. With, with Nike. That's happening with college kids all over the country You're now. Kidding? High school. I Pretty mean, I, I think and Kenny Clawson. I, I know Ken, that. Kenny Clawson. Can I see that? Can you see that handsome devil right oh, there? Oh, there he is. <laughs> I tell oh, you. Oh my God. Jeez, my, my nose was smaller then. How old were you then? I was uh, probably 20, yeah, 24. Was that the year? 1973 deep. That was the year he went off in 32. (laughs) (laughs) Right? You keep bringing that up. (laughs) All right, listen. Ah, We're going to take a quick break. We come back. Uh, Dan Wilkin from Memory Lane is going to join Charlie, myself, and Rico. Uh, And we're going to be all over the place. They have an exhibit uh, that they're kind of contributed up at Yankee Stadium, which I kind of don't like that park, but we'll talk about it anyways. Hang in there. We'll be right back. Pristine Auction is a family-owned and operated online auction specializing in autographed memorabilia, sports cards, coins, art, and collectibles. Since their founding in 2010, they've grown to two facilities in Phoenix, Arizona, totaling over 60,000 square feet. Jared Cavalli and an incredible staff of over 150 team members serve a very large customer base and enjoy every minute of it. By working with leading authentication companies, Pristine ensures all items are 100% authentic. In addition, third-party authenticators regularly travel to Pristine Auction to provide authentication services on-site. Pristine Auction strives to operate its business in a way that's honoring to God, their families, and their customers. With a strong focus on speed, quality, and premier customer service, their mission is to be the leading online auction for every level of collector and fan. Pristine also works for Hope Sports and Identity Hoops International, traveling to Mexico to build houses for the less fortunate. Pristine Auction offers several online auction formats with thousands of auctions ending each day. For more information, go to pristineauction.com. That's Pristine Auction, the best in the business. If you are a discerning collector interested in owning the most important pieces in the hobby, look no further than Leland's Auctions. The original sports auction and appraisal house, Leland's was established in 1985 by legendary pioneer founder Joshua Leland Evans. And today, President Mike Hefner carries on the tradition. From the Tom Brady card and memorabilia collection, to the famed Boston Garden auction, to high-end card auctions from every major sport, Leland's has always maintained the highest standards. Go to Leland's.com and get your bid in. That's Leland's the hobby's leading sports auction house for four decades. It's often been said that championships are won on the practice field and world records come only to those willing to work harder than everybody else. Heritage Auctions is the world's largest collectibles auctioneer because we believe that becoming the best is only an invitation to the challenge of remaining the best. 
This requires the skills of the hobby's top experts, capable of identifying and maximizing value for our consigners. It requires the most visited website in the industry, supporting a global audience of collectors over a million and a half strong. It requires a dedicated press department that expands our global reach far beyond the entrenched hobby marketplace. It's hard work, but a simple premise. Present the finest collectibles to the largest population of potential buyers, and world records will come. We invite all listeners to put the unmatched power of Heritage Auctions to work for you. Auction evaluations are always free, and our commission-based fee structure ensures that our interests are always aligned highest possible price for your collectibles. There will always be new world records to chase, so let's chase them together. Visit our website at ha.com and request your no-obligation review today. Hi, this is Dan from Memory Lane Auctions, here to remind you that the renowned Memory Lane Collectibles Company has served as a beacon of light to the collecting community for the past several decades. Indeed, folks, it has been our utmost privilege and pleasure to provide the most enthusiastic collectors with an abundance of the finest sports cards and memorabilia for America's most coveted sports personalities via our world-class auctions. Whether you choose either a private sale transaction or the auction route, Memory Lane cordially invites you to reach out to us to maximize the value of your prized possessions. Also, it is not just sales that we pride ourselves on being the best of the rest, because if you are seeking a particular keepsake for your esteemed gathering, we will be relentless in our quest to find that special piece to fulfill your collecting dreams. So no time to wait. Reach out to us today for the purposes of capitalizing on our unparalleled marketing capabilities. Simply pick up the phone and dial 877-606-5263. That's 877-606-LANE or find us on the World Wide Web at www.memorylaneinc.com. Now is the time for your valued consignment to ultimately become another one of Memory Lane's record-setting prices. Hey, I'm Mike Petroselli. If your company is looking for the best in marketing and promotional items, you'll hit a home run with Petroselli Marketing. With over 8,000 suppliers and 650,000 imprint ready items, we can get your company the visibility it needs to get your maximum exposure. Whether it be office promotions, wearables, automotive, sports items, and everything in between, Petroselli Marketing can do it all. Our design staff will even work with you from concept to delivery and customize your products. At Petroselli Marketing Group, we will get your brand in front of your audience. Contact us at info at PetrocelliMKT.com or call us at 603-880-3202. That's Petrocelli Marketing, where no dream is impossible. Sir, my, Petrocelli Marketing is my oldest son. I have four sons, and uh, he's a hard worker. And they got accounts all over the country, so, you know, there's no problem. Uh, you'll get the stuff on well, time. Listen, listen. Give him the number. Uh, he gave you a local number, but 800-860-4263. That's, that's 10 numbers. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Didn't they? Do it again. All right. 800 860 4623 All right. Four, six, two, and you get and, all, and the, by the way, all the stuff with your logo on it. Dan, you know Danny, that. Danny's with us, and Charlie's with us. Now, Petroselli has Petroselli marketing pens, Dan. And he gave me one. The thing lasted for four words and ran out of ink. <laughs> Don't believe that. Now, I am, this is, I've had this for a year. This is a memory lane pen. Look at the quality See? compared to what you guys gave me. Oh, that, don't say that. Maybe he wanted an order from us. You're a nice guy. Danny, that's a good point. <laughs> Kill I got to tell you guys, uh, uh, Lenny Clark was just in here wreaking havoc uh, before we came back from here. I don't know if you guys know Lenny, but Lenny's a comedian, a uh, Boston comedian. Yeah. Very, very funny. We're going to be bringing him in uh, uh, later on uh, for yeah. a full show with us. Do you guys know Lenny? No. Lenny, Sorry. Lenny oh, he's been in a zillion movies. Uh, he was, 
He's been in a lot of movies. You would know him. He's got a sitcom on uh, ABC right now. I can't remember oh, cool. the name of it. Yeah. All right. So just for the record, I got to point something out. For the record, it's sauce. All right? Uh, <laughs> all right? All right. I'm all from right. New York. I've dealt with a handful of mobsters over my lifetime. <laughs> and I'm telling you, it's not gravy. Gravy's for girls. It just infuriates me, man. Charlie, we've talked about it. Uh, when we were in Florida, we talked about it. It's just. We're going to talk about it again next month. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Danny, welcome from uh, Memory Lane is in the house. Danny, you know, hey, you know Charlie. First of all, what do, you, what, do you guys, what do you guys got going at the Yankee Stadium? That, that, you know, we got that, a great cesspool. Array. that cesspool. Hey, hey, yeah, yeah, a great array of, of uh, you know, high-end Yankee cards. We got, um, we kind of created, you know, a group of cards for people to come and see. The museum has always been an incredible stop. You know, while you're at Yankee Stadium, you know, primarily the greatest stadium in the world, you know, and that's, you know, that's just facts. But anyway, wait, wait, wait. Why is that fact? I, I can't I can't hear you that well. But what we have in the in the museum, who pays? <laughs> well, what are the, what are the seats behind home plate going for? You have to take a second. Alligator Alley. You're going to take come, a second they've mortgage. They've come down a lot. They've come down a lot. And the, the Yankees, I think the Yankees have the best record in Major League Baseball, oh, right? Jesus, here we go. I don't know. Yeah, right anyway, now, I don't know. I haven't yeah. I haven't looked in like two hours. But well, anyway. and, and you're right. And you're, you know something, you're right. But I think, correct me if I'm wrong, you may correct me, that the yeah. Red Sox have more world titles in this century than anyone. Correct? Yes. Okay. Four. Go ahead, Dan. Continue. Four. I digress. <laughs> So um, some amazing cards, hot, like real high grade Yankee cards. You know, we have a 41 play ball DiMaggio and a nine. We got a 40 play ball DiMaggio and a nine. We've got two Lou Gehrig 38 Gowdy cards, the green and the yellow. They're in eights. It, I'm telling you, it's an incredible example of high grade Yankee cards that, you know, people do not see. And the average fan you know, that goes to Yankee Stadium, doesn't go to card shows. So they're not exposed to that type of stuff. So we also have a 52 man on a seven. And we we pretty much pulled from our collection and from other clients and have put together, you know, have assembled this large collection that's on display at the museum at Yankee Stadium. And where, people can where check is, it out. Where's the museum uh, at the stadium? Once It's uh, upstairs. Um, I think it's the third level. Um, near home plate. Yeah, in that, okay, yeah, because in that area, Tampa Bay had uh, the Red Sox. It was in Tampa, the stadium in Florida. Really, uh, yeah. Red Sox. Yeah, it was a Red You're Sox Hall, Hall of Fame. Yeah, in Tampa, in, in at, Tampa, at the uh, Tampa Stadium. Right. Yeah, and then uh, they talked to the Sox, and uh, the Sox. I don't know. They couldn't work out a deal, <laughs> and so wow. they went to Tampa. Charlie, have you ever been to uh, Yankee Stadium? Yes. Yes. And your thoughts? Beautiful stadium. Oh, really? Beautiful stadium. Uh, the old one I liked. I'm a little old, old school guy. They knocked the old one down. I know they built one across the street. And I know that because of the technology, but that's a great stadium, uh, the, the history. I'm going to ask both of you guys this question. Charlie, you first. Do you have a big non-sports clientele? Not as much. Uh, we offer, you know, we got like Evil Knievel, things like that, Civil War packs, uh Pokemon? There's a lot out there, but it's got to be a certain clientele for those. But we do offer Star Wars uh, for, on that instance. And Danny, I've noticed in you, actually, I think the auction you have going now or is coming up, you guys yeah. seem to have gotten a little more into some historical stuff, right? Yeah, well, historical presidential in the last auction, we had presidential canceled checks signed by Orville Wright. Um, you know, we want to have something for everyone. And it's got to be high end, at least mid high end. Um, but we we are known for the vintage cards, for the real high grade, low pop type stuff. And you know that's what you know people who are going to consign to us gravitate towards that that array of uh, cards. So I'm assuming like something like a uh, Rico Petroselli rookie card PSA ten. Hey, come on. We would definitely take a ten, not because it's P Rico Petroselli's name. Because it's scarce and it's a low pop. Did I just say that? <laughs> a couple did. of my cards scarce. Actually, there are some kids, you know, in the card Come show. on, don't be so, you know. I, we know of one that's sold for 10 grand. 
Yeah, well, somebody yeah. was... Uh, we do. I'm sure. Hey, Rico, I miss you. I, I haven't seen you in so long. You know, Malori did the show last last time I was on. He did a wonderful job. Yeah, I thought he was good. Take Tom's, you know, well, Tom's I got to tell you something. We had, we had a card flip because I'm going to be out of action. Uh, I'm having some back surgery, so I'm going to be out of action okay. for a week or two. And Malori's taking... He's going to host another show... And uh, this time he's going to do it with uh, he's going to be hosting with Joe Orlando. So, oh, we, nice. yeah. So, uh, you know, we kind of mix it up. You, Joe, uh, Derek. See, but the problem with Derek is you have to have cue cards. <laughs> that's, that's that's the problem. You know, so, no, it's uh, <clears throat> it's good. Uh, uh, he's he's excellent. He, no, uh, he is. A special so guest host. Me and Dan could probably do a show. Absolutely. Dance. That's right. Hell yeah. So guess what? Me and Dan can run the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? We might trust me, it doesn't take a guys. lot, doesn't take a lot of thought. Dan, you had a so question? Answer your question back. Uh we were talking about non-sports. We do offer a lot of non-sports from like first year Star Wars on open boxes. Um, you know, we offer a lot of, you know, like John has a lot of those beautiful packs, you know, Orange those family. PSA holders. We handle you know, a lot of non-sports stuff and presidential type unopened stuff. So not, not much in the modern side, but as far as the vintage, you know, non-sports, uh, I love it. I mean, and it's a bargain and I still think it's undervalued because it's really, you know, nowhere near what a 76 series cello, you know, tops pack baseball pack goes for a 73 wax pack. So I think there's a lot of, you know, growth, that can still take off in that non-sports side. Charlie, you mentioned Pokemon. Yeah. T- to me, Pokemon is foreign. I don't know. I, I, me neither. No. I, mean, I, I don't tell Dan Garbage Pail Kids are pretty popular. Yeah. I mean, do, do, do you guys understand the whole concept of what Pokemon is? Because I don't, and I know you don't. No. Oh, what do you mean? No. That's what I said. I mean, I my expertise. They, they understand it. I don't pay attention too much to the Danny, Pokemon. Danny, do you? I mean, do you? It, it, Absolutely not. Okay. I, I don't want to know about it. You know, I learned a real good, you know, my, my stepfather told me many, many years ago, and it's worked my whole entire life. Stick with what you know. You know, you stick with what you know and you deviate a little bit and you try out, you know, other avenues and go down, but stay in your lane. I mean, you I stay agree. in your lane. Yeah, but no, are, what's the, what's the, uh, the, the uh, cartoon, well, cartoon. They've been on for twenty five years now. Flintstones. No, Flintstones. Bugs Bunny. Huh? Bugs Bunny. Simpsons. Who? Simpsons. Simpsons. Yeah, they have cards of Simpsons. Yeah, they do actually. I oh mean, yeah, 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 they do. Yep. I mean, they have cards for everything from Willy Wonka. Oh, to, okay. You know, seventy five different series of Star Wars. It just whatever's whatever movie comes out, they make cards oh. of. But okay. they mass produce that, that stuff today. I so love the non sport. I think I agree with Dan. I think it's very undervalued. I bought a 47 Gaudi Indian pack. I got Monsters. I got Adam's Family. I got Lost in Space. How about, how about the Stooges? Wow. Three Stooges are pretty popular. Stooges. Popular. I got two packs. There's only 16. Richard Cohen's got the other 14. I got two of the 59 Three Stooge PSA graded packs. Is Richard Early still collecting one. Stooges stuff? Ah, uh, look, I, just the cards. Fifty nine is a great. Set. I, no, he used to. Have, he used to have a ton of memorabilia. Oh yeah, too. Larry's dentures and uh, he, he, most. I, I, I sold him. Well, I had bought. I bought something at an auction years ago, and I sold him a Curly Howard punching bag. You know the ones that you blow yeah. up and you hit them, and then they come back at you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what I. Uh, <laughs> He's got one of the most <laughs> incredible. We've sold him so we filled a lot of his sets when he was looking for tens. But talk about an addiction. I think he had 15 of the 16, like, numbers on the set registry, set number one through 16, and 15 of them were his. <laughs> You're kidding me. You know, that's no, not, not at all. Not at all. All sports. So, well, the thing is, uh, well, there's millions of uh, collectors watching and listening to us. So Millions. And they probably didn't realize that you could, you know, collect these. Other than the baseball, oh, I no, I don't, I don't agree with you. I think there's a lot of them know that the stuff is out there, they're just not interested in it. Why? Because uh, they like baseball. The Beatles, well, I understand. The Beatles that, in '64, I think, outsold tops. All right, Beatles. I'm an air no, but you never towards, know. Wow, you never know. Or so. towards Rico, you know what Rico was saying? It's actually a damn good point that 
there are a lot of people that might not know that grew up in the 60s and 70s might not know that a Munsters pack or a, you know, a Lost in Space pack actually exists because they're so, you know, they're so into the sports cards. They might they actually might not as collectors, not the yeah, dealers. Right. El, Ellen I mean, has this is the truth. Ellen has a. There's a, a chest that she has with all her little kid stuff when she was little. Yeah. And we uh, we never opened it. We opened it once or twice. Yeah. She's got the whole, a whole collection of monkey cards really? from the yeah. monkeys. The monkeys, yep. yeah. New York. Oh, and, so, yeah. no, it's great to know. Yeah, you know, she that, does. Uh, and they're affordable. Like the Beatles, come on, the Beatles cards, you can get those things for a buck a piece. Wow. The color, the black and white. They're, and they're from legitimately from the 60s. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool stuff. It is. It's nice. Another, stuff. another one was uh, uh, that I used to collect as a little kid was, this is probably before your time, not you, Davy Crockett with Fespasa. Davy Crockett. Yeah. They had a whole. Davy Crockett's worth a lot. Yeah. yeah. Davy Crockett. Crockett uh, when, when the Disney Davy Crockett, when he was, uh, you know, Fespasa was playing. Yeah. yeah I had a lot. That would have been 1920s? 1920s? No, actually it was 19, probably 60, 59, yeah, 60. Yeah, yeah. 59, 60. I was born it. There's so many cool ones. Uh, Dan, my, I, I have about 36, 53 Bowman TV, radio, and stars. Cello oh, packs wow. rated. How about the Lone There's, Ranger? No, you know who's Lone rookie Ranger. cards in that? Christopher Walken. Yeah. Oh, no it's way. Wow. Yeah. Wow, well, that's so, I mean, really uh, cool. Those are cool stuff. It's cool great. Stuff. Yeah, it is. Very I mean, good. It, you know, this we, is... It's all about memories. Right. Yeah. We're chatting with Dan from yeah. a Memory Lane. Memories. Charlie from JRI Cards. Listen, uh, Dan, are you going to be on the East Coast at all? You know, I'm going to be in Detroit June 6th to the 9th for that show. It's the uh, offset of the the Chicago Sports Spectacular, so that show. And then the National. But you're so. going to be on stage with us. Uh, I haven't told you yet. I'm telling you right now. Asking you. Uh, I'm bringing in a – we're going to bring in this year. Uh, we're going to have – it's a two-hour show. Belly dances. <laughs> Rico wow. and I are bringing in uh, – we're going to bring in four guest hosts for each hour – and we're going to have sort of like a, uh, what do they call it? A, uh, a, f- a forum. So in the first cool. hour, I believe we're bringing in Dan Wilkin from Memory Lane Auctions, uh, Joe Orlando from Heritage Auctions, uh, Brian Dwyer from REA Auctions, and probably Mike Hefner from Leland's. Charlie, you going to be there? Uh, Charlie's not going to be there. You're not going to be there? No. Okay. Charlie we're broadcast live all, all three of those days. And yeah. then the second hour, I think we're going to bring in Brian Drent, yeah, uh, John Tarby. Uh-huh. Uh, I can't remember who the Honus other Honus Wagner, wasn't it? Yeah, Honus and <laughs> a, few other, a few other people. Hey, Dan, before we let you go, and Charlie, we have about two minutes left. There's a rumor circulating, and you don't have to qualify this. You can deny it. There's a rumor circulating that there's a big event coming up, I think, in the fall for you. Uh, Mayor. No, Dan. Yeah. In in the fall. Yeah, there's nothing. That, you yeah, know, you <laughs> there's it it's dedicated to uh Kobe Bryant's three jersey numbers. It's eight, the first one he started on, ten the Olympics, and twenty-four the this the second jersey number yes getting married for the first congratulations, time man. Hey, congratulations man congratulations so much. congratulations eight <laughs> that's so good much. i like the way you picked it out so you 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 are taking the plunge congratulations we're all very very happy for you thank you, you so, and listen john quick question for you no rico you mean would you john would you put that in one of your packs charlie you mean char i'm sorry charlie look at that is it a one one it's oh, a one Jesus. of one Wow! What is <laughs> it's a it's a card of him. Oh, 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 oh. I, I, Charlie, yeah, one I would have to pay you in order for you to take that because you it's know, worth about negative five dollars. Actually, we have one too. That's PSA graded of you and I. Remember at the national? Oh yeah, we yeah, have that's, one of you uh, and I. <laughs> oh, people are breaking down the doors to get that from us. All right, guys, Charlie, your website address is. JRICards.com. We're live six nights a week. We got over 200 products, some that I buy from Dan's auction. And when they sell out, Dan, we open them. We open them. Awesome. Awesome. Right. Can you repack wow. them? You, repack you, it? Huh? you do nice. the repacking? No, uh, no we, give away, we give away PSA cards on Slap. Monday. That's amazing. Great job. Repacking is a big right. thing now coming in, but we give them out for free during our don't, Monday. Don't mind us. <laughs> <laughs> <Awesome>. Dan, your <laughs> website address is. 
<laughs> www.memorylaneinc.com. And I want to hear Rico sing again. He, he's he's I, Rico's it. got a hell of a voice. Caramia Ma. You remember that song? Caramia Ma. <laughs> <laughs> With that being said, we love you guys. Have a great week okay, to our okay, viewers and listeners. Charlie, good seeing you guys. Thank you so much. Thanks we love lot, you guys. guys. for coming on. It was really good. Happy Always collecting. Collecting. Happy Thank collecting. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.